What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to talk about SQL Alchemy ORM. And the way I'm gonna explain it to you is I'm gonna show you a lot of different examples of how to do different stuff in Django ORM and then I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing in SQL Alchemy ORM. So if you are familiar with Django and you're trying to learn SQL Alchemy then this video should be very effective for you because I remember when I was using and learning SQL Alchemy and when I was trying to solve some problems, quite often I had this thought in my head, like I know exactly how to solve this problem in Django, but I have no idea how to solve the same problem in SQL Alchemy. And I tried to figure this out and it took some time and sometimes it took more time than I expected. So if you value your time, then this video should be very useful. It should accelerate your learning of SQL Alchemy, if you already know Django. So with that said, let's begin. Okay, before we dive into examples and differences between Django ORM and SQL Alchemy ORM, let's start from understanding transactions, because it's a very important concept if you want to write anything using SQL Alchemy. Think of transactions as a way to ensure that multiple database operations succeed or fail as a group. So if we try to, let's say, execute insert and delete operations in one transaction, then the result of this is either both insert and delete succeed or both of them fail. The way it works is when we start a transaction, we record the current state of our database and then we start to execute SQL statements. And if all of the statements succeed, then we commit the transaction. And after commit, all of the changes will be persisted in the database and visible for other transactions. However, if one or more of those statements fail, we catch the exception and we roll back any statements that succeed. Basically, we roll back to the state that we had before executing any SQL statements. Now, the way we handle transactions in Django and SQL Alchemy is different. In Django, we rarely think about transactions at all, because Django's default behavior is to run in auto commit mode, which means that each SQL statement is wrapped into its own transaction. And this transaction will be committed or rolled back depending on whether the SQL statement succeeds or fails. Just to illustrate this, I have installed Django extensions library. And this library has a shell. Django shell that prints SQL statements when they are executed. So on the screen, you should be able to see some examples right now. Now in SQL Alchemy, we have a session object. The session is the way SQL Alchemy interacts with the database. It allows you to accumulate multiple changes and then issue commit command, which will write all the changes to the database as one unit. This pattern is also known as unit of work. So on the screen you should be able to see how to insert multiple rows into different tables and as you can see all the statements to the database are sent at the end when we call commit method. So if commit raises an exception and you want to handle it, you should roll back the transaction manually. And an example of this is on the screen as well. Now when you understand the difference between how Django and SQL Alchemy handle transactions, you should see the pros and cons of both approaches. The advantage of running in auto commit mode is that it makes it easier to understand and write code using Django RAM. The disadvantage is that if you have multiple queries and one of them succeeds and another fails, then your database is at risk of corruption. Here's an example. So, we have make transfer function and this function creates two rows in the table, in the transfer table. Basically, we are trying to transfer money from one account to another. Now, what if the second SQL statement failed? What if the first one executed successfully, but the second one failed? In that case, we would have irrelevant data in the table because the transfer only makes sense when two statements executed successfully. The way to resolve this problem is to make queries to the database atomic. Atomicity means that the things you do within a transaction proceed or fail as a single unit. So if the block of code successfully completed, then the changes are committed to the database. If there is an exception, then the changes are rolled back. That's basically what session does in SQL Alchemy. In Django, we can achieve atomicity using atomic function. 
and you can use atomic function as a context manager or as a decorator. In this example, we use atomic function as a context manager. Now with this atomic function, either both transfers will be added to the database or none of them. And that's basically what we wanted. We don't want to add only one transfer to the database. Okay, I think we covered transactions quite well. So let's move on and let's talk about models. When you define models in Django and SQL Alchemy, the main difference that you will immediately see is that in SQL Alchemy, you have to be explicit. In Django though, a lot of stuff is done under the hood. For example, let's take a look at how we can define models with different relationships in Django and SQL Alchemy. So on the left side, we have some models defined using Django RAM and on the right side, we have some models defined using SQL Alchemy RAM. And on both sides, we are trying to achieve the same thing. We are trying to achieve the same database structure, but as you can see, the implementation looks different. So let's discuss the differences. First of all, model class that built into Django by default creates an auto increment integer primary key. In SQL Alchemy, we have to be explicit about it. So when we create a model using SQL Alchemy ORM, we need to define an ID column, which is an integer and a primary key. When we create a model using Django, we don't need to do that because we inherit from model class that built into Django and this class already has an ID column defined. Another difference is that in SQL Alchemy we have to model relationships completely ourselves and by relationships I mean one-to-many, many-to-many and one-to-one. -one. In Django it's easier than in SQL Alchemy because Django handles relationships for you, at least on a database level. Okay, for example, if we want to create a one-to-many relationship between two models in SQL Alchemy, we need to define a column first and then we need to declare a relationship between two models. And notice that when we define a foreign key, we point to the ID column of a chat table. But when we declare a relationship, we don't point to a table. We point to the chat model instead. Another thing to notice when we create a relationship between two models is backref argument. This argument declares a reverse relationship and in our example we have lazy dynamic which creates a dynamic relationship. And dynamic relationship means that when we access chat.messages we get a query object that we can further filter. If we don't specify lazy argument, the default value will be select and it works differently. The way it works is that when we access chat.messages, the first time SQL Alchemy will send a query to the database and it will fetch all of the related messages and then return a list. There are some other lazy values besides dynamic and select, but we'll not go into the details here. You can just Google that. Instead, let's move on and let's talk about how to do different queries in Django and SQL Alchemy. So let's start with Django. When we want to filter queries in Django, we use keyword arguments in a format that you see on the screen right now. Also, here are some examples of queries in Django. The first one only gets unread messages from the database. The second one gets only messages that contain the word hello. And the last one gets messages that contain the word hello and also messages that are unread. If you are familiar with Django RAM, all of this thing should be quite obvious for you. As for SQL Alchemy, in SQL Alchemy we use model expressions for filtering. And here are some examples. Basically, we are trying to achieve the same thing here. We are trying to get the same data from the database. The only difference is that we are using SQL Alchemy now and the syntax of SQL Alchemy looks a little bit different. So let's go further and let's talk about joins. When it comes to joins in Django, it's easier because it handles joins for you. And here's an example of how to get chats that have unread messages in Django RAM. In SQL Alchemy, if we want to do the same thing when we want to join tables, we need to be explicit about it. So here's how to get chats that have unread messages in SQL Alchemy. As you can see, we are calling join method but we don't specify condition of the join because SQL Alchemy automatically tries to find what to join on. But if we want, we can specify the condition and here is how it looks. Most of the times it works without specifying the second argument, but sometimes if you have a lot of relationships, it can perform automatic joins not the way you want to. So be careful. Now let's take a look at how we can reuse queries. For example, 
What if you want to fetch from the database only dialogues that have unread messages? And by dialogues, I mean chats with only two participants. Now the example is what if you want to check if a particular chat is a dialogue or not, or let's say we want to check if a particular chat has unread messages or it doesn't. Obviously, we don't want to copy and paste the same code all over again in different places because it violates dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. So let's start with Django. Let's take a look at how we can reuse queries in Django. And we can reuse queries in Django by creating custom query sets and by creating some properties or methods in models. So what I've done is I've created chat query set class and I've also created a couple of properties in chat model. So let's take a look at the query set. First of all, we have dialogues method. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get only chats with two participants. And the way I do this is by, first of all, calling annotate method. And the way annotate method works is it generates participants count value for every item in a query set. And we are trying to calculate the number of participants for every item in a query set. So after calculating participants count, we can filter by this field. And we only want chats with two participants. Another method is unread. I don't think I need to explain anything here. It's quite easy, but we are trying to basically get chats with unread messages, that, that's it. And a couple of methods is dialog and is unread. They are doing the same thing. The only difference is that we are working with a particular chat. So we are trying to check if a particular chat has only two participants or not. And also we are trying to check if some chat has some unread messages. So on the screen right now, you should be able to see how this query set and how these properties can be used in practice. Now let's talk about SQL Alchemy. In SQL Alchemy, we can make the code reusable by using hybrid properties or hybrid methods. Here I have created two hybrid properties, is dialog and is unread. And what hybrid property means is that you can use this property at the class level as well as at the instance level. So let's just take a look at some examples of how we can use these hybrid properties because I think it's going to be easier to understand them. Also in our code, we only used hybrid properties. We didn't use hybrid methods, but basically they are the same thing. The only difference is that we can pass parameters to hybrid methods and we also need to call them. I'm not going to show you how to create hybrid properties because like I said, they're just the same. Now let's discuss a problem that you'll face no matter what framework you use. And this problem is called n plus one problem. And it's a database performance issue that affects many ORMs, including Django ORM and SQL Alchemy. And if you know how to solve this problem, and it's quite easy to solve, it's not something that is difficult, but you could really make the difference by solving this problem. I remember one of the projects that I worked on before, and on this project we used Flask and SQL Alchemy. And when I started working on this project, it was already in production. And I remember that some of the pages worked really slow and just optimizing database queries and just solving n plus one problem really boosted the performance on these pages. So let's talk about this problem. And let's start with the example written in Jenkins. So in this example, we need to pull messages from the database for every chat and then show message text and information about the message sender. How many queries to the database do you think it will send in order to show all of this information? And if we have only two chats in total and each chat has 10 messages, it will be about 23 database queries. So let me explain. The first query is to pull all chats from the database. And then for every chat, we need to pull messages since we only have two chats, it will be two database queries. The first query is to pull messages for the first chat, and the second query is to pull messages for the second chat. And finally, for every message, we need to pull information about its sender. And since we have 20 messages in total, 
it will be 20 database queries if all senders are different as far as i know but i'm not sure about that if some senders repeat then the number of queries will be less because Django will not try to fetch the same objects multiple times but I'm not sure about that and I don't want to check it right now but the worst case scenario is it will be 20 database queries for fetching senders so in all we have 23 database queries that is quite a lot given that we only have two charts what if we had more charts then the number of queries would grow very very quickly and in Django it's quite easy to fix so let me show you how to fix this in Django and after that I'm gonna show you how to fix this in SQL King. so in Django what we can do is we can preload required information into memory by using prefetch related method and it's gonna look something like that by using prefetch related we reduce the number of queries from 23 to only three one query for chats one query for messages and one query for users senders as for sql alchemy here is how we can do something similar as you can see we preloaded message senders by using joint load however we didn't preload messages for chats and the problem is that you can't preload dynamic relationships because dynamic relationships produce queries not collections so be careful when you define and use dynamic relationships in your models because they can cause a lot of queries to the database however nothing stops you from defining two relationships to the same model so as you can see i've created messages relationship and messages dynamic relationship so i would recommend you to use relationships that return a list by default but when you really need to filter nested data and when you really need dynamic relationship, you can easily add it to your model. Also keep in mind that you can filter nested relationships without even using dynamic relationships. And there is a function for that and it's called contains eager. So in this piece of code, what we do is we load chats that only have unread messages and we also preload messages into memory for every chat. But we preload only unread messages into memory so when we access chat.messages we get a list of unread messages not the list of all messages okay guys that's gonna be it for today it was a long video it was the longest video that i have ever made so far and if you're still watching this video appreciate it so much and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel my name is dennis and this channel is all about mycene web development and growing as a full stack python web developer there appeals to you consider subscribing and if you'd like to connect with me even further you can follow me on twitter or on my instagram links will be in the description so <laughs> thanks for watching guys see you in the next one